Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the Daily Stock Market and look at that, another green day for Coinbase up 8.5%, NVIDIA, Green, Meta, Qualcomm, NEO, AMD, even Tesla finished the day green. Very, very few stocks are red today, so pretty green day. Tesla was down around 5% in the pre-market and climbed its way all the way back up. So in this video, we're gonna do a quick stock market update. Yes, CPI did come in at 6.5% and the estimate was 6.5% as expected. Here we can kinda see, I did post on the close friends list, Tesla's still showing a bullish signal. So there is a good chance we will see a positive move at the open for Tesla stock tomorrow above 125 per share. Lots of results happening in the close friends list right now. One student was up $250, 54%. Beautiful results happening every day. Another student up $824 just in the span of one day. You can see date purchased was 112. Should I keep it or should I sell? And we went into a deeper conversation on what he should do. So if you need a little bit more advice on the stock market, a second voice, or you want to follow along with my trades, I post my exact trades I'm getting in and out of. So you are alerted at all times. Fast money on all of our plays. All account sizes are welcome. Countless students up 80% or more this week. So the question really boils down to what are you waiting for? Now we did see ticker symbol BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond up 50% just in one day, a 250% gain in the past week. And if you guys remember what's going on with Bed Bath Bed Bath & Beyond is they had a lot of rumors going over bankruptcy right now. And they're starting to finalize these talks with these bankruptcies. We've seen Bed Bath & Beyond skyrocket up to around $30 per share before. There is a good chance that I think it could end up around $10 per share. But the risk first reward is skewed too far on the risk side, especially after a 250% pump. Now it could pump some more. Looks like there's a lot of uh, retail investors buying right now. That's why the stock is surging. Here we have an article, why Bed Bath & Beyond stock skyrocketed on Thursday. Bed Bath & Beyond stock move higher as retail investors return. So, you know, it is going through that meme stock thing, catapulting it higher once again. Other names like GameStop and Carvana traded higher with retail investors as well. Third quarter net sales declined 33% to $1.26 billion over the prior year on $390 million in losses. Bed Bath & Beyond struggles are not new. The company has lagged behind competitors in online and e-commerce sales for years. Seeing the stock skyrocket on potential bankruptcy news and poor earnings may seem counterintuitive but it's not unprecedented. Sometimes companies that are on their way out of business see an increase in buying activity among speculative investors. Even the FTX token saw a huge rally after the coin's parent company imploded. Carvana also up 46% on the day, up 70% just in the past week. This was another stock that had a lot of analysts questioning is a bankruptcy on the horizon or is one coming very soon. And a lot of analysts think that there was a, a bankruptcy coming. And that's what pushed the stock down to around $3.70. Here you can see it was down 80% just in the span of three months. Very, very dreadful outlook on the company. Down 95% just in the last year. And that's after a 70% rally take, took place. Okay, they were down closer to 97, 98% at one point. If you guys remember, Carvana was trading closer to $200 per share at its peak. It was around $350, $360 per share. So it's absolutely crazy to see a company fall this tremendously. And if we see a rebound from Carvana, we can easily see a, a thousand or 1500% gain if it does get back to its old prices. So that's why a lot of these speculative investors or retail investors come in and buy a few shares. And if you know they put a hundred dollars in and it goes to a thousand dollars, that risk versus return could be worth it at that point if you're only putting in $100 or $200. Carvana is burning significant amounts of money at this point. Their EPS is closer to negative $3 per share. Okay, we also see Carvana admitted it broke the law in Michigan, but it can keep selling cars there. 
Carvana settles with State of Michigan over title and registration complaints. Carvana stock soars to lead New York Stock Exchange gainers on heavy volume. Okay, as you can see, the average volume is 13 million, and today the volume was closer to 87 million. So around eight times, seven to eight times as much volume as usual. So let's look at the fundamentals of a company that's headed towards bankruptcy, okay? So the net income we see in 2017, it's gotten worse. It went from a negative 160 million to now negative 287 million. So they're getting further away from profitability every single year, which is a horrible thing. And to be losing that much money is significant. Their revenue is looking good, but obviously with 12 billion in revenue that hasn't um, adjusted to anything in net income. Their balance sheet is getting out of control with their debt to asset ratio above 80%. Heck, it's even above 90%, closer to 92%. If we look at the quarter over quarter, we can see that the, the balance sheet's getting worse and worse. It went from 86% to 92% to 99% and this most recent quarter is sitting at 96% debt to asset liabilities. So in, until they get their balance sheet under control and get those debt to assets under 80% or 60% even, I'm not even gonna consider them even for a speculative play because there's a good chance they are headed to bankruptcy and your shares could be worth $0. Okay, and also on the quarter over quarter, we see that their net income is not getting any closer to profitability. Every quarter is actually just getting worse and they're losing a half a billion dollars per quarter basically at this point. And every year they are typically only losing 250 million, 360 million, 460 million, but now per quarter they're losing 500 million, 400 million. 500 million every single quarter. So until we see and look at that quarterly growth on net income and we see it in the 500 millions and heck, even if we see it below 200 million per quarter, then this is not an investable company. We need to see that net come quarter over quarter drastically improve before investing in them even as a speculative play okay so now we have bbby bed bath and beyond financial statements pulled up we will start with the income statement on net income quarter over quarter they've been losing significant amounts of money let's pull out the to the yearly to see we can actually see in 2018 they were profitable and the last four years have been unprofitable which is very sad we can also see which is very, very bad to see that their revenue is declining. So no one's even buying from that store anymore, going from 12 billion in revenue to 7.8 billion. So that's a huge red flag. The net income is a red flag. But if we scroll down, look at this balance sheet, okay? On an annual basis, it really didn't look that bad. 58% in 2018 debt to asset ratios. They were keeping it under control, under 80% debt to asset ratio. But the most recent year is 96%. And if we look at the quarterly graph, we can see that it's getting worse and worse. So this is what we don't want to see from Carvana, going from 90% debt to assets to um, 96% to 104%, which is more liabilities than assets. And the next quarter increasing to 112% and then 118%. So it's just getting worse and worse for BBBY. I don't think that this company is going to make it. Carvana still has a chance as long as their numbers are not getting significantly worse. Um, the main concern about Carvana is their net income. They're losing so much more than they ever have before, and that's happening right now. And the next meme stock that we're going to be talking about today is GameStop, ticker symbol GME. Everybody knows them, and they're up 8% on the day, down 3.2% after hours. So why not talk about them? They're up also 24% in the past week. So they've had a little bit of a rally here in the past week. But however, in the last year, they are down 38%. They look like they are due for around a 20% spike up to around $25 per share. Okay, that's a very, very possible thing that could happen. But don't be surprised if we see them dip down again below $10 per share. I think there's a very strong possibility that we will see GameStop fizzle out. Overall, it is a downward, downward trend that GameStop has had over the last few years, fizzling out slowly and slowly. 
until it reaches around $5, $7 per share once again. So be very cautious when investing in any of these stocks that we're talking about. They're some of the most risky and speculative stocks on the entire stock market and they have a strong chance of going bankrupt a lot of these stocks however let's look a little bit deeper into the financials of gamestop to see if they are something to be concerned about on a bankruptcy factor or side of things let's look at the annual chart of the net income first and here we can see that it's really not as bad as it could be okay we saw in 2019 they were almost negative one billion dollars so they could still be trying to recuperate from that however if we go to total revenue year over year we see another grim note here um losing on total revenue year over year in 2018 they were 8.5 billion and now they're closer to 6 billion and if we go back even further to 2015, we can see that it's just been a steady decline. More people are buying digital, going to Best Buy, buying on Microsoft, buying on PlayStation Store directly instead of going into the store nowadays. A lot more stuff is done through email, online, codes, where back in the day, even in 2015, a lot of stuff was more physical. People would want a tangible copy of the game and now it's not so much like that so the total revenue is definitely dying off um, quarter over quarter it's even looking bad quarter over quarter net income is getting a little bit better however the balance sheet is not too bad so gamestop could definitely stay afloat for a, a while longer if they need to with only 62 percent debt to asset ratio Nothing too much to be concerned about on bankruptcy right now. However, if it gets closer to that 80% or above, that's when more red flags would be taking place. And we can see that the debt to asset ratio on the balance sheet in 2021, by the way, on GameStop was above 80%. And in 2020, it was 78%. So those were the two most concerning years for bankruptcy on GameStop. Now they are straightening out a little bit. We really just need to see that net income getting to profitability. And for a company like GameStop, we really want to see an increase in total revenue, um, or at least not it dying out. We want to get back to that $8 billion range for total revenue per year. So I hope you guys really appreciate that video. Going over some of your favorite meme stocks, go ahead and slap a like on this video and subscribe on YouTube for more full-length videos. If you want to join my close friends list where I go over exactly what I'm buying, signal alerts, price alerts, and everything in between so you can see when to buy and when to sell, go ahead and click on success number seven. Go over some positive testimonials just from this week and today. And if you want to go back a little bit even further a few weeks ago or a few months ago, click on success number six, success number five, over 500, over actually 700 positive testimonials now and over 2,000 students on the close friends list. So what are you waiting for? Let's have you become the next success story. So go ahead and message me on Instagram to get started today. I'll shoot you over my website so you can check out everything for yourself. All right, guys, share this video with a friend. If they are a meme stock investor or if you think that they will find it helpful, subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.